I eat cannabis for breakfast because I believe our grandchildren will thank me for it. I don't just eat cannabis seed because it gives me lean muscle and lush hair. I eat hemp seed because it's one of the easiest things I can do to reduce my greenhouse gas emissions and my reliance on toxic chemicals and fossil fuels. Hemp seed is actually the world's most nutrient-dense seed. It's a complete alkaline protein with all 20 amino acids. It's got anti-inflammatory nutrients like omega-3 and minerals such as iron, calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium. Cannabis is known as the companion plant to humans because it's one of the only resources on Earth that can feed you, clothe you, house you, and heal you. Henry Ford himself grew hemp. He made a hemp Model T car. It was stronger and lighter than other models. But due to prohibition, it's not viable. Imagine all the Ford motor cars today if they were made out of an organic, solar-powered, natural, renewable resource. Imagine what the world would be like today if cannabis was never prohibited. Why not build your house out of hemp? Hemp concrete sequesters carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, literally reversing greenhouse gas emissions. Plus, it's fire resistant, so your house won't burn down. It's got great insulation properties. It breathes its antifungal and antibacterial. So you can be rest assured that your family is going to grow up in a healthy, clean environment. The cannabis flower has been used as a non-toxic medicine long before Jesus Christ was even born. So why? Why are we not harnessing this super crop, this human companion that we've been using for the last 10,000 years to make life on Earth more convenient? You've probably got gardens. Why aren't you growing cannabis right next to your lemon tree? Farmers, you've got hundreds of acres of grass. Imagine what you could be doing with all that land if you just planted it in cannabis. So many great resources. So why? Why aren't we growing it everywhere? Well, we used to be. Let me take you back to last century, just before the war. Hemp, the billion-dollar crop. During the war, new chemicals were found to have commercial uses, and hemp was the natural threat because it was unpatentable and it was a renewable, abundant resource. To destroy the hemp industry, chemical interests lobbied the American government to make all cannabis varieties illegal to make way for a new synthetic industry. How ironic, considering Thomas Jefferson wrote the U.S. Declaration of Independence on hemp paper. The word marijuana and the campaign Reef of Madness was designed to scare public into thinking all varieties of cannabis were, psycho were psychoactive. They distributed documentaries into schools, and they came up with this story that a young boy addicted to marijuana killed his family with an axe. In actual fact, there's 113 known cannabinoids that have functional benefits on the body. Only two of them are psychoactive. The study of medicinal cannabis actually understands how different varieties of cannabis affect our endocannabinoid system, which is actually the largest system, the receptor system in our brain. So the whole world was left to believe all cannabis is psychoactive, and going near it would make you a criminal. So all of these stories were planted to make way for this new toxic chemical. Their cunning plans worked. We've forgotten the real use of cannabis. And today, chemicals are coming out every orifice of every industry. We've realized that these chemicals are poisoning our environment, ourselves, and our children's future. So there must be a solution, right? Maybe it's an algorithm. Maybe it's flying to Mars. Or maybe Mother Nature's one step ahead of us. Phytoremediation. Phytoremediation is when special plants suck up toxins from the soil and metabolize it as food. Cannabis eats toxins for breakfast. Over the last 10 years, hemp has been planted around the nuclear power plant disaster, Chernobyl, to help reduce toxicity in the soils. We are all on track to triple our use of natural resources by 2050. This, is, this poses a severe threat to our economic and human security. 
So if we can make non-toxic houses, food, medicine, and the clothing like I'm wearing today, all out of hemp, why aren't we growing this plant everywhere? Using hemp seed as my vehicle for change, my mission is to help transform consumer culture from unsustainable to rejuvenating our global backyard. My company, Plant Culture, enables a clean and easy transition for the modern consumer to find purpose in being environmentally proactive here and now. Imagine waking up and eating hemp seed for breakfast, knowing you're helping reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Well, guess what? You are not allowed. <laughs> Since 2002, 14 varieties of, of cannabis have been legal to grow in New Zealand with a permit. Despite this incremental law change, New Zealand is still the last country in the world where we have to sell animal food, uh, sell hemp seed as animal food. The SAD diet, the, the standard American diet, yes, that is the acronym for that. <laughs> I'm not surprised that the SAD diet does include, doesn't include hemp seed. It is SAD. So I'm going to show you a simple recipe that might make you question the world we live in. This is hemp seed and water. This is hemp milk. It's creamy, nutrient dense, and delicious. Per 100 grams, hemp seed has more protein and iron than steak. It has more omega-3 than tuna, more dietary fiber than oats, and over 100% of your daily intake of magnesium and phosphorus. Plus, it's a great source of zinc. What if eating hemp seed for breakfast enabled a society to diversify into clean, green, healthy hemp crops? What if eating hemp seed for breakfast enabled innovators to create products turning consumerism from unsustainable to regenerative? Your grandchildren will thank you for it. Come and see me after the break to try hemp seed milk. Together, let's plant the seed to grow our future. <laughs>